church say amen. 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 Happy New Year. 2022. My goodness, isn't it good to know that God has smiled on us through this pandemic. Amen. amen. We're still here. So I don't know about you, but we have come into this house to gather in his name to worship him. Amen. 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 So good morning, Canaan. Good morning. And for those who are joining us virtually on YouTube, on behalf of Dr. W.C. Watson, our senior pastor, we greet you in the honorable name of Jesus. We also want to wish you a healthy, a happy, a healthy, a happy, and a blessed new year. Happy 2022. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Again, we have come into this house to gather in his name to worship him. Amen. Amen. I will bless the Lord when? At all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouth this joy the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away this year in 2022 we need to be reminded that trouble don't last always and and we need to seek joy pastor watson would say be joy filled but we need to have joy every second every minute every hour every day can someone say j-o-y j stands for jesus the o stands for overflows and the y stands for in you in 2022 let jesus overflow in you amen amen let us pray father we thank you we thank you for this day we thank you for this brand new year we thank you, Lord, and we pray for the Holy Spirit to come into this house of worship. We thank you for being so good. We thank you for smiling on us. Lord, we celebrate you, the author and the finisher of our faith. You keep doing great things in our life. We adore you. We magnify you. We praise you. For we know that when the blessings go up, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. No matter what we're going through, as it says in Job, though he slay me, yet will we trust in you. We're going to hold on as a body of believers. Even through a pandemic, even through misery, even through suffering, even through grief. We know that you have, you have come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you for this Canaan family. We thank you for those who are viewing virtually. We thank you for the women, men, and children of God. We thank you for members and friends who are worshiping with us today. Lord, we thank you for all who gather to magnify you. Let us be used mightily for your kingdom let us not take anything for granted. Bless us, anoint us, humble us, so that we may follow your way and do your will. Not my will, not our will, but let your will, let your way be done, is our prayer in 2022. Lord, we pray for our young people, Lord. We pray for our elders. We pray for those who are sick. We, think, we pray for those who are in prison walls lord we just thank you lord for you are a present help in the time of trouble put a hedge of protection around us and help us truly be about your business let your will be done is our prayer help us be the people you're calling for in these last and evil days let the people of god say amen amen, amen. amen. and amen the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. 
At this time, we'll have scripture by Deaconess Betty Johnson. Amen? Amen. I thank and praise God for this opportunity to be in worship on this first Sunday in the new year. It is truly a blessing. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 26, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. The word of the Lord for the people of God. We will now have a musical selection, followed by words from our senior pastor, Dr. W.C. Watson, Jr. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. morning. Give an honor to God, Pastor Watson, worship leader, Dr. Hill, Dr. Annie, Canaan family and friends. Happy New Year. I bring you greetings in this brief reflection as we bid farewell to this past year. 2020, I'm sorry, I mean 2021, <laughs> part two, was quite a year. It seemed to drag on forever, yet it went by like a blink of an eye. Yeah, yeah. We celebrated milestones for some important people and events in our lives, and we lost some precious folks. Yes. Our foundation has continued to be tested, mm -hmm. but as Dr. Annie said, we persevered. Well. We came to further understand what is really of value, our health, our people, and our faith. In this time of reflection, it is important to acknowledge all that we experience, and above all, the God that carried us through. When we thought, this is it, I can't take one more thing, God stepped in and sent a blessing that melted our souls. We realize how blessed we are and reaffirm to whom we belong. We realize it is also important to acknowledge the giver of every good and perfect thing and also came to appreciate even more those folks we are blessed to have in our lives. Yeah. We learned we must stop taking things for granted, and we learned we must stop taking people for granted. Yeah. There are some folks out there who are no longer with us that I am so grateful that they knew exactly how I felt about them yeah. before they passed on. Yeah. And there are some folks still here that I need to do a much better job of letting them know how I feel. I have been blessed with some heroes and sheroes that brought me through just when I needed them. I am blessed abundantly with the love of my family, my friends, and my mentors. But how am I doing with letting all those folks know how profound effect they had on my life, my spirit, and my soul? It is upon all of us to let those precious people know how we feel. And I talk about my blessings, but trust me, I have gone through some stuff. Well, mm -hmm. But the longer I live, the more clarity I have. Yes. You see, I remember feeling insignificant, well. that I just didn't matter. And these random things would happen to me. I would run into an old student who would tell me I was the only teacher that they learned from, and I actually made math fun. Mm -hmm. I was a Sunday school teacher, and one of my former students told me, that they really appreciated me because I never judged or looked down on them. I would have these random encounters with folks that warmed my heart. Everyone goes through what I think of as droughts in their lives, and they need that affirmation that they are loved, they are cared for, they are valued, and they make a difference. We are called upon to act actively pursue these folks and give them their flowers, and you may never know what a profound effect it has on their lives. So to steal from my own Facebook post, with all that has gone on, with all the folks we lost, with all the blessings we've received, let us not let this year pass without letting folks know how much they mean and thanking God for all things. My wish for you is you to know how amazing you are, that you are loved beyond measure, and you are appreciated. And just to let you know that I appreciate you. I bought these hearts that are chocolate with peanut butter, just to warn you. And I have a basket in the back, and I'm going to put one over on this side. So that when you leave out, just know that you can take that love with you. And you truly are children of God and are appreciated. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Oh, I feel blessed in this new year, in this new season, to have entered into these gates with thanksgiving, to come in with an intent to give, a determination to give praise. And we're thankful for the inspiration uh, and the reflection this morning. Thank you, choir and music ministry, a worship leader for being on fire for the Lord. Thank you. Uh, Madam Dr. Professor Hill uh, for sharing with us in such a wonderful way as you did. I'm thankful when she came bearing gifts. 
I pray that we'll all have something to give and render in this new year and this new season. So we're thankful for that. Uh, I believe the year starting out in good fashion already. I do believe that this will be a day and an occasion. This will be a Lord's day to lift him up and to magnify his name. I declare prophetically that before we leave this house, uh, this house known as Canaan, and all of those who are viewing with us virtually will give him some praise, glory, and honor. Uh, we want to, in this year, we'll be sharing much in terms of thoughts and intentions, plans and projections for the new year, but I pray that we all intend to go from good to great, in season and out of season, whether there's a pandemic or no pandemic that we need to challenge ourselves uh, in this coming year to be more committed to spiritual growth, to be more dedicated to church attendance, and to be more faithful in our giving to the Lord. And so with that said, we invite all of you to prepare to give wonderfully and generously and gloriously today, whether you do so in this house or you do so online by way of our cash app. Uh, we invite your generosity, and we know that our Lord and our God loves a cheerful giver. We're prepared to move on with the worship that the Lord has ordained for this day. Uh, we're going to ask uh, the mu musicians to play just uh, a bar or two of a meditation as we give you an opportunity uh, to render your gifts if you have not had a chance to. The tithing box is to my left and your right. The general offering box is to my left and your right. And communion service is there. And so you may avail yourselves of any of those uh, in these next few moments as the musicians play. Uh, they will render uh, a meditation and then they, the choir will come to us again. And we know they will delight our ears and our hearts. Let us go forth.
us. Let us acknowledge the Lord at this time. Our Father and our God, 2020 has come and gone. 2021 has come and gone. And now 2022 is here. And we've made it through, not by any goodness of our own, but because you are great and greatly to be praised. You're the God of all times and all seasons. You've been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. You are the great I am. You are master of all things, maker and creator of things seen and not seen. You are the faithful one. Great is thy faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning, morning by morning. New mercies we see. You're the God with all power who laid us down last night, uh, but was faithful and powerful enough to raise us up this morning and to give joy in our hearts and thanksgiving in our soul. Oh, that's why we are on a mission today. We uh, come with an intent and a sure agenda. Oh, that we'll bless the Lord at all times. And your praise, your celebration, your magnification shall continually be in our mouths. We invite New Year's blessings, a fresh anointing. We ask and petition, Holy Spirit, that you would come and do a new thing in our midst. That old things, uh, old worries, old issues would be done away with. And behold, all things will be new. And we ask it and beseech it because we've received the promise from the one who is great, from the one who is lovely, uh, from the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world, from the one with that name, where every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. We petition it in the only name that we know you recognize as being glorious in your sight. And that is the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Come now and have your own way. Preach, teach, anoint the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. And then visit with us in a powerful fashion that we will know and we will declare again, surely the Lord was in that house and he has made me glad. Our prayer, our petition, and our supplication is in the name of Jesus. And it is for his sake that we say amen. amen. And thank you, Lord. Oh, God is already stirring up things. I do believe this is going to be a great day and a great new year. And I'm thankful that as we're preparing to go forth, uh, there's a word that the Lord would have us hear on this first Sunday of the first month of uh, this new year. And as I ask your attention to Matthew chapter 5, verses 8 through 15, Matthew chapter 5, verses 8 through 15. I was just acknowledged, uh, we, uh, even in these times, we have a college student or two who will share with us and who will interrupt their studies or come in from their vacation break to share and worship with us. Uh, I know that Ajane Hill does so on a regular basis. We're thankful for that. I do believe I see Colin, Edwin Colin Moore there. There may be other students, other college students in the house, and uh, we acknowledge them as well, and we just acknowledge you as sons and daughters of the Most High God. And so I'm thankful to be in the midst of an auspicious assembly. In the Gospel of Matthew, as we invite you to stand to honor the reading of the Word, in the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 5 of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning with verse 8, the New King James Version records these words, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed 
are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp stand, and it gives light. It gives light to all who are in the house. Beloved, we have read just a portion, a portion of the Beatitudes. Uh, but our focus is on one thought in particular, uh, one nugget of truth and insight and inspiration in particular that Jesus shared uh, in this Sermon on the Mount. Uh, one thought to kick us off uh, this new year, one thought uh, that brings particular inspiration and uh, charges and challenges us uh, with a rededication, the thought. The thought relates to this instruction, or shall we say commandment to rejoice. Uh, that is, to celebrate, to exhibit, to uh, reflect upon a sustained outpouring of joy. I believe the worship leaders was lifting up that word today, uh, an outpouring of joy. Uh, joy, you know, a deep commitment and delight and contentment, uh, not just for yourself, not just for your family, but for all who are around you. Uh, in fact, uh, this instruction and commandment, this commissioning and this mandate uh, provides for us a subject and a title for this message today. And it is this, it will listen closely to me. It is what the Lord would have you do in 2022. What the Lord would have you do what the Lord would have you do in 2022. I know a lot of you have gotten beyond making New Year's resolutions, but you have good intentions to do more better. Uh, and so uh, for those who have not uh, made that resolution, uh, for those of you who are chronic resolution breakers, uh, I want to give you something to hold on to, to cherish uh, for the entire year and that is a thought and a consideration about what the Lord would have you do in 2022. Sometimes, sometimes the word of God goes straight to the heart of the matter. Uh, it goes straight to the heart and tells us in a very simple and clear manner what the Lord would have us do or what he would have us not do as a people of God. Uh, it's sort of like uh, in Ecclesiastes, in chapter 12, the concluding chapter of, of that book, where the Spirit of God anoints Solomon uh, to summarize uh, essentially what he's been saying in the whole book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, it gave him the, these couple of thoughts to just sum it all up, where he says there in the 12th chapter, chapter let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. So in that light, likewise, we find something curious at the heart of the many teachings from Jesus Christ uh, during his earthly mission. And we find it particularly uh, in his parables. Uh, what we find is that uh, beyond Jesus emphasizing salvation uh, and love, uh, prayer and, and, and praise, Jesus notes that joy is the beneficial outcome of redemption and revelation through God. Oh, yes, Jesus spoke about 
joy. Maybe that's why some folk talk to us and, and address us and announce them to us. Uh, they will greet us in Jesus' joy, with Jesus' joy. You, you could say, you could say, church, that he teaches that joy is the expected outcome. Uh, of the redeeming presence of God in our lives and in our circumstances. Uh, it is the telltale sign. For those of you who are in forensic, uh, forensics, it is the telltale sign that someone has benefited from God's grace, his glory, and his favor. For instance, you'll find Jesus speaking about joy in, in, in these contexts. Uh, in his parable of the sword of the seed, uh, where he, is, he says, there were those who heard and received the word from the sower uh, with joy. And, and, and then in that parable of the treasure hidden in a field, where the man who found and profited from it hid the treasure again, uh, but did so with joy. Uh, and, and in the parable of the talents given out to three separate people uh, where two uh, did the right thing with their talents and the other fell short. But for the two who did the right thing, uh, there was an invitation from the master to enter into the joy. Well, I love the thought of that, it, uh, to hear that invitation, to enter into the joy of the Lord. So we find uh, it there in the parables, but also we find this teaching of joyful benefits in the commissioning of the 70 disciples uh, in the Gospel of Luke. After the 70 had been sent out uh, with their instructions, with their marching orders, and then after they returned, uh, we find them uh, saying they came again with joy. They came again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Oh, there must be some power in that name. Oh, and there uh, must be some wonderful results that come out of using that name with faith and confidence and, and lifting it up, uh, not promoting yourself, but promoting him. Uh, he said, did he not? If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men women, boys, and girls, unto me. And so it is somewhat understandable that one of the most powerful and lengthy sermons uh, that Jesus delivers, the Sermon on the Mount, had at the very heart of his message a teaching and an instruction that says rejoice. Oh, rejoice. Uh, that is uh, joy multiplied and activated and joy repeated and magnified. Did he not say rejoice? And we can hear this even as he says blessed, blessed. Rejoice in joy and contentment. Blessed are you if your heart is pure. Those who are pure in heart. Rejoice. Blessed if you are a peacemaker for God. Uh, I do believe we have some peacemakers in our midst. And, and certainly in the confounding and confusing times we're in, the turbulent and insurrectionist times we're in, we need some peacemakers uh, in the mix. Rejoice. Uh, that is, blessed are you even if you uh, uh, find yourself troubled, persecuted, and, and even hated on for doing the right thing. Uh, not for doing your thing, but for doing the right thing for righteousness sake. Uh, and it tells us rejoice and be exceedingly glad because there are some benefits for you. Uh, there are some benefits not just in 2022, not, uh, not just here and now, but there are some benefits for e an eternity. Uh, I like the thought of that. You know, God is not a hit and quit type God. He's, he's not a fly-by-night God. Uh, he's, he's not a, a hit it and quit it uh, God. No, God uh, is in for the long run. Uh, he, he was and is and forever shall be the same yesterday, today, and always. 
But understand this, understand this, that this is not just a suggestion uh, from Jesus uh, or a recommendation. This is an expectation. Oh, you know, some people have given themselves a pass. Uh, they believe that they have all rights and privilege to be down, depressed, and in the dumps 24-7. And, 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 and they're pleased to be left alone just where they are. But Jesus is letting us know. Uh, he's preaching and teaching uh, to us in that Sermon on the Mount that he has an expectation. If you call yourself a child of God, uh, uh, that maybe we could put it this way. God expects that we will be the salt uh, of the earth. Uh, the salt that adds that special something extra uh, whenever we show up. You know, uh, when we bring, uh, when we show up, we bring a righteous flavor to any gathering. Uh, ever, have you ever seen those people? Do you know of those people? You just are glad when they're around. A smile is on your face uh, because they don't bring drama. Uh, you know, they, they don't bring issues, uh, but they bring a kind of warmth. Uh, and encouragement. It is just good to be around uh, good people. Uh, we are the salt. Uh, we change the atmosphere for the better. Uh, no matter what, where things are or what they look like or, or where they happen to be. Uh, we, we are the salt. We bring a more pleasing perspective to any conversation. Uh, and some of the conversations, the meetings that I have, uh, there's a voice or two that I really want to hear from uh, because I know they're bringing a, a wonderful flavor. They're bringing some wonderful insight and, and a wonderful spirit to the discussion. God has an expectation. God expects that we will be the light in any scenario. When others want to be negative, uh, we are inclined to bring a positive light. Isn't that good? Uh, when you are a difference maker, when you can't help yourself, uh, uh, you, you just can't do any better. That you, you can't dwell in negativity. You, uh, you don't do well in pity parties. Uh, uh, you never go where folk are always complaining and, and always mumbling and grumbling. Uh, no, uh, you have to bring some positivity or you have to get up out of there. Uh, the, we are the light. When others want to be depressed, we shine a light of hope, joy, Joy and inspiration. Isn't that good? That you always have job security in this world because the world is in need of some hope, some joy and inspiration at all times. Uh, and, and in fact, beloved, God teaches us that we have to sometimes flip the script uh, in our lives and the lives of others. For instance, we're told that we should count it all joy. You know, folk, uh, you know, uh, when, when they're, you know it when they're going through something because you're going to go through something with them. They're going to make sure they don't go down by themselves. But isn't there a word that tells us count it all joy when you fall into various trials uh, and temptations and challenges, uh, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Uh, but let patience have this perfect work that you may be perfect and complete. That is, you may be mature, complete, lacking nothing. And if there's anything that you do lack, you can ask it of God. I'm so glad about that. I do believe that God inclines his ear. Uh, to the voice, to the petition of, of his children. Uh, when, when you're serving faithfully in the kingdom, uh, when you're doing that which pleases God, I, I do believe that God is just waiting to hear uh, what his son or what his daughter needs next. Uh, if you lack wisdom, ask of God who gives it liberally and upbraided it, it, it not. Uh, thus, uh, we, can, uh, we can tweak our, our subject today and, and pose it as a personal pose it as a personal question to each of us. And that is, what would the Lord have you do in 2022? Uh, oh, yes, uh, yeah, yes, not just generic, but what would the Lord have you do? Uh, God speaks to us all individually. Uh, he knows us all. He's counted, numbered the hairs on our head. And, and if we were bald, he, know how, he knew how many were there once upon a time. God would ask, uh, what... Uh, what would you have me do through you in 2022? 
22. Uh, that is a question for somebody today because uh, somebody is a little bored and a little just put out right about now, uh, just a little directionalist uh, at this point. Uh, but there are some things we can draw uh, from the Beatitudes, from the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, there uh, is not just a suggestion, there is an expectation. It is that you will use your flavor. Oh, yes, you got your own flavor uh, that you will shine your light. Uh, I'm not talking about somebody else's light, but let your light shine that you will declare your faith. Oh, you can't get by off somebody else's faith uh, for the rest of your days. God bless the child who's got her own uh, faith that you will give your own testimony. Uh, that you'll be able to tell the folk what the Lord has done for you. Uh, yes, I know what he, he did for her. And sister so-and-so looks like she's being blessed. And, and I see God pouring out uh, some grace on somebody else. But let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Uh, I, I believe I heard a little bit of it in Dr. Vanessa Hill's message a little earlier. Uh, what, what would the Lord have you do? Uh, I believe he's asking and seeking and expecting that you'll stand on the solid rock that is Jesus, uh, that, that you'll stand and continue to stand in the midst uh, of the storms of life, in, in the midst of the difficulties, that you'll just decide that you're going to stand and, and do the right thing uh, for the Lord. Uh, come what may, those storm clouds rise and strong winds blow. Uh, as for me and myself, you need to talk to yourself every once in a while. I will take a stand. I will take a stand uh, for the Lord. It may not be popular. It may not be understood. Uh, but I will stand for the Lord. Uh, I say to you, beloved, that through it all, you can maintain your joy. You can maintain your joy uh, if you just put it all in perspective. Uh, when you realize that I don't rely on my own righteousness because I know that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, I, I realize this too. The word says, the Lord promised that the steps of a good man, the steps of a good woman are ordered by the Lord. And though they fall, don't you know we stumble every once in a while? Everybody's going to trip every now and then. But though we fall, we will not utterly be cast down because God got you. He's got you. And he will keep you. He will keep you from utterly falling. Uh, when you'll be able to say, when you'll be able to say, in this world, uh, we shall have trials and tribulations. But I don't sweat it anymore because Jesus gave me a promise. Uh, he declared, but be of good cheer. That is, have yourself some joy. Be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. I, I've overcome the issues and the challenges. I've overcome everything that makes you scared, uh, that has you trembling in your boots. I have overcome it all. That's why you need to stand on him as the solid rock. Uh, you need to tell folk. Uh, with a resounding statement uh, that there is joy, joy, joy in your life. That's what you need to do to declare uh, that I'm going to be about a positive agenda in this new year. Uh, I will do so, but I know I can't do it because every once in a while I get weak and, you know, and I fall short. Uh, but Jesus reminded me of something that even he had to rely on. Remember when he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he is called uh, anointed and appointed me to bring some salt and flavor into this situation did he not say the spirit of the lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor if jesus needed the spirit of the lord then i think all of us need the spirit of the lord if we're going to do something uh, for the Lord uh, in his kingdom. Uh, we need to understand that it's the spirit of the Lord. I, uh, I got some extra power. I'm not doing this, you know, off my human, uh, off my human will, off, off my human capability. But the spirit of the Lord, that's what we need. Some Holy Ghost power. The spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord has sent me to heal 
brokenhearted situations. You can't figure it out on your own, but when the Spirit gives you the wisdom, you will know that you know that you know what is the right and pleasing way of God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has instructed me to declare freedom for folk who are bound. I'm not going to get down and wallow with you in the mud. I'm going to declare that you are free uh, in, in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of the Son of God. And whom the Son sets free is free in, indeed. Uh, you can tell the world that I have a confidence. I have a strength. I have an audacity because I've been authorized to bring sight and insight. The Lord says, uh, along with the others, I am the light of the world. You know, I, I can bring sight uh, to folk who are blinded by their own confusion. Uh, and then you can declare in this new year that the Lord has given you uh, a new spirit, a new mind, a new attitude to rejoice. Uh, and to be glad that you're not going to drag that old depressing stuff into this year. Uh, that, that, that you're not going to be shackled by the stuff that had you bound last year. Oh, no, that you've come in. You've come in with a new attitude. Uh, you have a 2022 attitude. Uh, you've come in with a new commissioning. God has authorized you to do something new and different. Uh, to go from strength to strength and glory to glory in this new year. And then the Lord said, uh, as you're getting converted, as you're coming to a new understanding, reach back and help that sister. Reach back and help that brother. Share a little joy uh, in their life as well. Tell them about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Tell them why you have joy in your spirit, dancing in your feet. Tell them why you're excited to get up every morning to realize what the Lord has done, uh, that he is good, uh, he is merciful, everlasting, his truth endures into all generations. That you come, that you come strong, and you don't come empty. You come loaded to, to do work on behalf of the kingdom, uh, that folk won't be dragging you down, pulling you down, that you're standing on the sure foundation. And as for you and yourself, you and your commitment, you will serve them in this new year. Uh, you will bless them with a new spirit and a new attitude. You will declare, this is the Lord's doing in my life. And this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in my eyes. I'm so glad we have a new agenda. It's a new year. Uh, I don't care what happened last year for good or, or bad. This is a new opportunity. God has a new expectation. He's given us a new charge. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, making disciples, uh, declaring unto them that God will be with them always. Tell them, remind them, I will never leave them nor forsake them. It matters not how down they get. Tell them that I'm still there. I'm still on the throne. Tell them no matter how sick they get that I'm in the healing business there's more healing in the in the hem of my garment than in all the pharmacies of the tell them that the Lord is able he is an overcome overcomer our God can do all things but fail tell somebody who's about to give up that don't you you just hold on just a little bit longer tell them that I have some good news it is the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, that he is able to do what he says he will do how blessed how blessed how blessed how blessed how blessed musicians just lift up something for us uh, to continue our charge to spur us on for 2022 
am so glad that I know, I know the Lord as my saving grace, my redeemer and deliverer. I'm so glad that I know the God who's able to transform my midnight into days, my sorrows into rejoicing. And I'm so glad that he is authorized. He has the power and the anointing to do just what he said he would do. And therefore I'm mindful, I'm mindful that on the same night in which he was betrayed, how confusing, how gloomy it may have been and may have looked to the disciples to know that they were being challenged, they were being accused, they were being persecuted and harassed. And yet Jesus gathered with them in an upper room for a special supper. Uh, those whom he called uh, his own. And as the word record, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and blessed it, and he took the cup and declared, this is my body which is broken for thee. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Uh, because no matter how gloomy it looked as he was going through his passion, going through the challenge uh, on his way to a crucifixion and a cross, Jesus realized that there would be joy waiting early that Sunday morning. Let us prepare, let us prepare for our joy journey as we look to visit in spirit with our Lord and with all the disciples throughout the years as we bow to say unto you, God, that you indeed are great and greatly to be praised. We thank you for teaching us, Jesus, uh, that uh, we who are peacemakers, that uh, we who hunger and thirst after righteousness, that even the meek, uh, we all are blessed in your sight, blessed by your spirit, blessed in our going out and in our coming in. Uh, blessed on good days and bad days uh, from this point on. And so we're thankful, and we're thankful that uh, you were able to assure us uh, that you would do exceedingly abundantly for us uh, because you sacrificed your body and you shed your blood. And we thank you for the sacrifice, for your brokenness that made us whole and for your bleeding that washed away our sins. We thank you that you did what you said and you said what you would do. And we declare how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And we ask Holy Spirit that you would anoint anew and afresh, that you will bless uh, these sacrifices this food that we're prepared to share in uh, as a communion, a common union of disciples in this day, that you bless it through the power of God and in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for every good and perfect gift in that name. And so, beloved, as we come as the disciples in this new year of 2022, uh, with Jesus in our midst, his presence is always with us. We declare that we are accepting a new charge uh, for uh, a new season, and that we have come uh, to share in the common union, the communion with our Christ and our Lord as we prepare to eat and drink together. And we say amen. Oh, I believe it's celebration time before we go down from this place that we can be thankful that we have a God about whom we can say Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. I'm thankful 
that we can reflect and meditate on him. Go ahead, musicians. I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh, how wonderful, how blessed, how marvelous and magnificent. Declare it with every instrument. Oh, you have to tell us about that. You have to tell us about that, church. someone we're in communion or we're sharing wave at someone in the house guide me along along the way Celebrating him. Lead me, Lord. Oh, guide me today. Declare it, church, declare it. to go down from this place having been fed and nurtured by the presence of God, the name of Jesus, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, we declare unto one and all, may the grace and joy of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, the blessed and powerful communion of the Holy Spirit, the sweet fellowship of all of those who call on his name and believe in his salvation, May that rest rule and abide with you, encourage, inspire, and challenge you, not only this day, but all of the days of this year and ahead, that those in this God say together. Spirit. Amen. Amen again. God bless you all. 